Game, game Dev, Dev Journey. Journey. This first project will guide you through making your first Godot Engine game. You'll learn how the Godot editor works, how to structure a project, and how to build a small 2D game. Why 2D? Well, 3D games are much more complex than 2D ones. While many of the underlying game engine features you'll need to know are the same, you should stick to 2D until you have a good understanding of Godot's game development process. At that point, the jump to 3D will be much easier. The game we'll be making is called Treasure Hunt. Your character must move around the screen, collecting as many coins as possible while racing against the clock. Launch Godot and create a new project. Make sure to use the Create Folder button to ensure that the project's files will be kept separate from your other projects. I'm going to name the project Treasure Hunt. Change to the 2D view. Now I've prepared some assets for you to use in this game and you'll find the link in the description. I'm going to drag the asset folder and drop it in the file system. So all my treasure hunt assets are in this folder here. Now since the game uses pixel art we want to turn pixel snap on so that we use whole number values when we are moving our images across the screen. So if you go to project, project settings and rendering 2D, here you can say use GPU pixel snap, turn that on and close and there we are ready. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is set up our player. Now Godot is made with nodes and scenes and we're going to create a player scene. The first scene you'll make defines the player object. One of the benefits of creating a separate player scene is that you can test it independently, even before you've created the other parts of the game. This separation of game objects will become more and more helpful as your projects grow in size and complexity. Keeping individual game objects separate from each other makes them easier to troubleshoot, also easier to modify, and even replace entirely without affecting other parts of the game. It also makes your player reusable. You can drop the player scene into an entirely different game and it'll work just the same. The player scene will display your character and its animations. It'll respond to user input by moving the character accordingly and it will detect collisions with other objects in the game. To create the scene we're going to click on the plus to add create a new node and we're going to search for area 2D. Then we're going to click on its name and change it to player. Now we can press ctrl s to save the scene and player.tscn is perfect. Click on save. Now this, this is the scene's root or top level node. You'll add more functionality to the player by adding children to this node. But before we add any children, it's a good idea to make sure that we don't accidentally move or resize them by clicking on them. So we're going to select the player node and click on the little icon next to the lock. This icon here, you'll see uh, it says make sure the object's children are not selectable. If we click that, it groups all the children together. It's a good idea to always do this when you're creating a new scene. Um, if a body's collision shape or sprite becomes offset or scaled by accident, it can cause unexpected errors and be difficult to fix. With this option, the node and all of its children will always move together. Right, with Area 2D, you can detect when other objects overlap or run into the player, but Area 2D doesn't have an appearance on its own. So we're going to click on our player node and we're going to add an animated sprite node as the child. So we can search for animated sprite and add it. You'll notice it's now a child. The animated sprite will handle the appearance and animations for your player. Note that there's a warning symbol next to the node. An animated sprite requires a sprite frames resource which contains the animations that it can display. 
To create one, we're going to find the sprite frames property and where it says empty, we're going to click and say new sprite frames. Then click on sprite frames to open up the sprite frames resource. Okay, on the left is a list of animations. We're going to click the default one and rename it to idle. Then we're going to create a second one and we're going to rename it to run. And we can even click and make a third one and rename it to hurt. So there are our three animations. Now in the file system, we see we've got our resource here. We're going to use our dead ground as the hurt animation. So let's rename this to three dash hurt. In the file system on the left, you find idle run and hurt and you drag the images into the corresponding animations over here. So for hurt, we'll go and select these and drag them in for idle we'll select these and drag them in and for run we will select these and drag them in and now we have our animations in the right place each animation has a default speed of five frames per second this is a little too slow so we're going to click on each of the animations and set the speed to 8. So we'll change that to 8. And we'll do the same for idle. And the same for hurt. Right, in the inspector we're going to click on the playing property to preview what it looks like. So if you come to the inspector, you click on your animated sprite playing. If you click on it, you can now see our sprite playing. Now, one thing I might mention is these are pixel art images, but as you can see, Godot is filtering them and smoothing that pixel art. I want to get rid of that effect. So what I'm going to do for my textures is I'm going to click on the import settings over here and where it says filter I'm going to click off and re-import and I'm going to have to do that for all of these images re-import them now you can see it immediately the filter is gone I have to highlight all of my run images disable the filter and re-import them and highlight all of my ground images disable the filter and re-import them. So now at least I can have my pixelated sprites. Right, so we have our animations set up. Later you'll write code to select between these animations depending on what the player is doing. But first we need to finish setting up the player's nodes. Now when using Area 2D or one of the other collision objects in Godot, it needs to have a shape defined or it can't detect collisions. A collision shape defines the region that the object occupies and is used to detect overlaps or collisions. Shapes are defined by Shape 2D and they include rectangles, circles, polygons and other types of shapes. For convenience, when you need to add a shape to an area or physics body, you can add a collision shape 2D as a child and then you select the type of shape you want and you can edit its size in the editor. So we'll go to our scene, select the player and add a collision shape 2D as a child and then we will, uh, this will allow us to determine the player's hitbox or the bounds of this collision area. So in the inspector next to shape we're going to click on empty and choose a new rectangle shape 2D and there the box appears. Now we're going to have to adjust the shape's size to cover the sprite. So we're going to pull it a bit higher there and a bit lower there and a bit wider there and a bit wider on the other side. Right. 
and there we have our, our hitbox.